Hi and welcome to my first tutorial video ever. So if my voice sounds a little shaky, it's because I am feeling pretty weirded out by just talking to nobody. Anyway, the purpose of this tutorial is to show the basic usage of reference layers in Manga Studio 5 to fill an area and avoid getting the white halo or that fringe effect you get around line work. If you were to, for instance, just copy the line work to another layer and try filling it in, you would get like this really ugly fringe. I'm sure you've seen it and know what I'm talking about. Um, for the record, I am no expert at all at Manga Studio, um, and this is probably not likely to be the only way to fill art like this. This is just the easiest way I've found so far and it's also a little, it's not intuitive, it's a tool that's kind of hidden and people might not know about it. Um, anyway, to get started, go to your layers panel. And mine's over here, your setup might be a little bit different. Um, my layers panel is off to the right here, yours might be on the left. We want to make a new layer and we want it to be below our line work layer. You'll see here that I have a basic setup, the sketch with the line work over it, pretty much how people tend to do it. You want a new layer. Oops, I uh, did two. I'm doing a whole bunch. There we go. And we'll go ahead and name this color, just because naming your layers is a good idea. So we have our color layer below the line work. Now we want to go choose, highlight the line work layer, so it's the active layer, and go up here to where we see these little icons, and pick this one. There's one that looks like a little lighthouse, and it says set at re as reference layer. Click that. Now click your color layer, highlight that again, and you'll see here there's a little lighthouse. In the space between the visibility and the layer information, you'll see a little lighthouse. That means this is now our reference layer. At this point, we can go in with the layer, with the color layer selected, we can go in and start filling in our stuff. So one of the fastest ways people like is using the fill tool or the bucket tool, which is right here. Now before you just start dumping color in, oh that actually worked, well, oh because I have it selected, you need to select over here under where it says subtool fill, again your menu might be in a different spot. Make sure refer another layer is selected. You see it's highlighted. If you were just doing the editing layer and tried to do something, it would just fill in the whole thing and it would be terrible. So any fill, any closed area will fill just like you expect. Now with areas that aren't closed, let's get rid of the sketch layer so we can see that I have a pretty open area here. With areas that aren't closed, you have another option. You Well, you have a lot of options. You can go ahead and use the brush tool of your choice and, you know, kind of close the area yourself and use the bucket tool to fill it in. Or you can use this other option. To do this, choose the brush of your choice. This works with basically any tool that makes a mark. Um, it doesn't have to be the pen, it can be a brush or pencil or whatever, any tool that makes a mark. So you have your subtool menu here and below that, once you choose, I'm going to use this G pen because everyone has that. Go to the tool property menu and right down here you see a little wrench and that pops up the subtool detail menu. Now here on the left hand side go to the very bottom and choose anti-overflow and you want to choose do not exceed line of reference layer check that make sure that is checked you also want to make sure that area scaling is checked make sure that's checked if you don't choose area scaling no matter what you do with the pen you'll still get the white fringe effect and it's 
that's what we're trying to avoid. So do not exceed line of reference layer and area scaling. Now another option that I like to do for these tools, and this works with any of these, there's this little box here. If you check that, a little eyeball shows up. What this means is that from your tool property menu, you now have the option to toggle this on and off without having to open up the subtool detail. So we'll close that. We'll see it's down there. We can toggle that on and off. Now with the pen like this, the main thing is when you're using this to fill an area, you'll see that I have my cursor set up to be brush size. This is the maximum brush size with a little crosshair in the middle. If yours doesn't look like this and you want it to look like this, go to File, Preferences, choose Cursor, Brush Size, and Cross. This, there's a whole bunch, and you want cross size, Brush Size and Cross. Go ahead and say OK. This is really useful because when you are using this tool with the anti-overflow option selected, you need to know where the middle of your brush is because once you start brushing in, it will fill anything. You can go, you see the brush size goes over the edge, but it still fills it. However, if you were to, if the middle of the brush was to go over, you would get an overflow like that. So you can go ahead and just fill everything. You can go in little areas like this. If I was light-handed, I would be able to do a really awesome job around his eye. That came out pretty good, but you can see you can fill in areas pretty quickly. As long as the middle does not go over. Now, if you were, say, there's this end here, if, if you were to go beyond it, it's going to bleed out like that. That's the only thing. If you have lines that aren't open and you're, and you're really, you have a huge brush and you are not light handed and or not light handed. Anyway, you see how that happens. Oh, I filled this eye. Well, that's a good thing for later. Now you will notice, let me get down here because I noticed this earlier when I did a test. You'll see that right in here, it looks like it's not, no matter what I do, it's not filling that area. To get this to fill, basically it's my sloppy inking. Leaves these little white pixels that the brush tip is just, it's just not seeing that as an area to fill. So what you need to do is go over here, back to your line work layer, and just toggle visibility off. And you see there's the pixels that I don't want. And just, you know, fill in these areas. Make it all tidy. Toggle it back on and it's all filled. Finally, like I said, this works with all tools that make a mark and actually it'll work with tools that don't make a mark. It'll work with the eraser. We'll say, I want to take, I want to clean up his eyes. Go to the eraser tool, go to the tool properties of the eraser, um, pick the same thing, anti-overflow, area scaling, everything like that, close that, and you can go in and erase, whoop, erase back if you wanted to do that for some reason. If you were doing, you know, a bunch of flat colors, I guess you could, you could do that. and it just removes the color. And that's it. That's really, basically, you know, ba this is the most basic level of using a reference layer and getting your flats in 
um, without getting that halo around. You can see uh, spots. That's just my crummy inking. Got it all cleaned up, and then from here you can you can go in and make another layer and set this um, to clip to the one below and do your coloring like you do and you are good to go. I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry I babbled on a whole lot. That's pretty much my MO. Wow, that looks really scary. And thank you very much.